Kazakh President Kasim Jomat Tokayev declared on Tuesday that military troops from the Collective Security Treaty Organization, or CSTO, would withdraw in two days as a new prime minister is named. After over a week of raging violence in which over 160 people were killed, order is expected to be gradually restored in the country. But where does this escalated protest or another color revolution attempt leave the country? What lessons can be learned? China has on many occasions voice support for Kazakhstan in maintaining stability and stopping the violence. Now with the new Prime Minister, how can the country resume its path for development and how can China help? I'm pleased to be joined from Moscow by Andrei Kotunov, a Director General of the Russian International Affairs Council and by Professor Wang Jing from the Northwest University of China in Xi'an. Gentlemen, welcome to the point. So uh, I want to go to Professor Wang Jing first. What is the situation right now in Kazakhstan? Is the situation well under control? Uh, I think the situation, if you look at what is happening during the past week, the situation is that from a uh, going transformation from uh, from the very turmoil now into this uh, relatively uh, stability. Uh, first of all, after the government, uh, Kazakhstan's government uh, uh, measures, because they try to pacify the tension, and on the other hand, under the assistance from the 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 the, the, the collective CS, uh, the, CSTO, the, uh, yes. Really, CSTO under the CSTO's assistance. Now the the, the, the stability come back. So okay. in the future they will maybe challenge the instabilities. But now the situation is become better and better. Professor Kortonov, in an online in meeting of the CSTO on Monday, President Tokayev described the previous described the turmoil as an attempted coup d'état, whose main goal was to undermine the constitutional order and to seize power. How do you read the statement? Well, we should keep in mind <clears throat> that the process started with the rise of uh, fuel prices, and many thought that it was about uh, a very limited economic agenda. <clears throat> the government was ready to meet uh, the demands of protesters, but uh, violence erupted, and it became clear that it was a political agenda, not just a, a limited set of economic demands. Uh, and uh, protests were about uh, a regime change rather than about anything else. So President Tokayev apparently wanted to emphasize uh, the scale of demands uh, and the gravity of the situation. Professor Wang, uh, Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi said on Monday that China is ready to firmly support Kazakhstan in maintaining stability and stopping violence at this critical moment uh, concerning Kazakhstan's future. So this followed President Xi Jinping publicly expressing his support to uh, Kazakh President Tokayev. China has on many occasions voiced support in the situation for stability. Uh, why such a strong message from China and how important is it for Kazakhstan? Uh, China's strong message towards Kazakhstan is very important because given uh, the, the instability that arises very suddenly and uh, everybody is watching also what is going on there and wh whether or not the, the, the regime uh, is still able to uh, handle with this uh, uncertainties of whether or not the government can uh, be overthrown by these protesters or the other uh, violences inside the country. But then China stu uh, stood out and, and uh, expressed our uh, very strong support to the, to the government and uh, our strong support to the efforts of the restoring stability inside the country. So this is a very message from the international power that we are still confident over the, the government's efforts and we are still uh, very confident that all this violence inside the country should be ended. So that's why China's support is very uh, uh, important to come to, uh, comes out every, at a very timely, uh, uh, ta very timely and also it comes out at a very critical moment and also it expresses our political and diplomatic support to the Kazakhstan government. So that is why we call it very critical and also very important. Mm. Professor Kortonov, uh, at the CSTO meeting on Monday, Russian President Vladimir Putin said the events in Kazakhstan were not the first and far from the last attempt to interfere in the internal affairs of our states from the outside. But the uh, CSTO would not allow color revolutions to take place. What does this message signify from the Russian leader? I think it suggests that uh, Vladimir Putin puts a major emphasis uh, on the international geopolitical environment in which uh, Kazakhstan uh, exists and has to operate. Uh, indeed, we have a lot of instability in the region, 
Uh, we have uh, uh, Afghanistan, uh, which uh, is uh, definitely not a stable place. Uh, we have uh, many turmoils uh, in the Middle East, and on top of that, uh, we have uh, geopolitical competition between the East and the West, uh, uh, and uh, definitely the United States uh, and uh, some of its allies uh, uh, would like uh, to have uh, their foot in the doorway, so to say, would like to influence political developments in Central Asia. So Vladimir Putin argued uh, that uh, we should regard developments in Kazakhstan as a part of a broader picture of the global and regional instability. Hmm. On Tuesday, uh, President uh, Tokayev said the main mission of the CSTO peacekeeping forces has been successfully completed, and this marks the first time that the CSTO has engaged in an active operation, and the mission included over 2,000 troops and 250 pieces of military hardware. So, Professor Wang, does this mean the CSTO is emerging as a possible peacekeeping force in Central Asia? Uh, I think it suggested a very important role of the CSTO in this region, because on the one hand, it can uh, the, the forces of the CST, uh, CSTO can be organized and sent out into the other countries, its member states, very and in a very uh, timely moment. And on the other hand, after this, uh, the, the actions, the finish, the, uh, the mission the complete, uh, complete, uh, completed, their forces can be withdrawn from the country without any other uh, very political conditions, without any other economic aspirations from the mem other member states. So this means that on the one hand, the political coherence of the CSTU are very strong. And on the other hand, this the, the political principle that uh, of the CSTO member states toward the other member states under the conditions of, for example, instability and the turmoil that are met because they do not offer uh, the other political aspirations to the other member states uh, for their uh, using of the military forces. So I think this suggests a very unity and the coherence and also the high efficiency of the CSU suggests that it can play the better and more important role in the future, not only in this region, maybe in the other parts of the world. You see. However, these interventions have drawn uh, doubts or suspicion from Western countries. For instance, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has questioned Kazakhstan's decision to ask for outside military assistance, saying that uh, the Kazakh government had the capacity to deal with the protests itself. So, Professor Kortanov, how legitimate and how necessary is the CSTO deployment, and uh, in, in what ways is it different from Western inter or U.S.-led interventions? Well, uh, Kazakhstan is a sovereign nation. Uh, they have all the rights to invite uh, whoever they want uh, to assist them uh, to manage their security problems, and uh, Kazakhstan is a member of CSTO. Uh, so I don't uh, see a problem of legitimacy there. Let me also emphasize that unlike some of the U.S. involvements, uh, this uh, involvement was very limited uh, in terms of its time and in terms of its mandate. Uh, it's just a couple of days, not more than that. Uh, plus, we should keep in mind that uh, it was uh, a relatively small intervention. Uh, we got slightly more than 2,000 uh, uh, uniformed men there. And of course, uh, the main uh, mission in restoring law and order lies uh, with the uh, Kazakhstan uh, security agencies, uh, not uh, with international peacekeepers. Uh, it's been said that a sudden, and, and we touched it uh, very briefly, that uh, the sudden rise in fuel prices triggered the protests, which turned into the worst un uh, unrest in the country in the past 30 years. Now, with the crisis under control, uh, what kind of uh, immediate developmental challenges, Professor Wang, does the country still face? I think the Kazakhstan also still has a lot of uh, the challenges ahead, because we know, as you say, Liu Xin, that the, 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 the protest and the instability comes out of the fuel price going up. And then this, uh, this suggested the very weakness of the uh, Kazakhstan's uh, internal market and, and economic system. So it means, first of all, the future government has to do something to handle with economic problem and to help the, the, the pacify the tensions through the economic reform and the marketing reform. So this, is, I think, is the very first uh, the target. And also, uh, on the other hand, uh, the, the government has to do something to, uh, to, uh, to suppress 
the very, very uh, terrorists and also other the, the, the descendants inside the country because we see that uh, this is not only the social protest, it's not only the economic protest, it's the political movement is trying to overthrow the regime. So it means that, that the government should do something to secure the, the stability and order of the country. So this is the political one. And meanwhile, we have also to, to, to see that there's some kind of criticism from other the Western countries, from the other parts of the world. Some of the countries, maybe they want to just disturb the in internal uh, stability inside mm -hmm. the country, but some of the other countries just uh, don't know what is happening there. So that is why they also need the diplomatic okay. efforts to clear, clarify what is happening inside Afghanistan for the Afghan government, to, to, uh, to inside the uh, Kazakhstan for the mm -hmm. Kazakhstan government. So okay. that is why th okay. they, they need to do a lot of yeah, finally, um, Professor Kortanov, uh, the latest development is that President, Tok President Tokayev appointed a new government headed by Ali Khan Smilov, who was uh, uh, voted into office on Tuesday. And uh, uh, it is said that uh, Professor Tokayev has taken aim to address inequality. And he said he wanted uh, associates of former President Nusatan Nazarbayev to share their wealth. How do you make of this move? And uh, what will be the legacy of Nazarbayev? who ruled the country for nearly three decades? Well, of course, uh, uh, the first president of Kazakhstan, Nazarbayev, uh, will remain in history as uh, the godfather uh, of, uh, of this nation, as the person who uh, was uh, at the origins of the Kazakhstani uh, stake, uh, uh, stakehold. Uh, however, uh, it's time to go on, and I think uh, some political and economic changes in the country are unavoidable. Let us hope that uh, the Kazakhstan uh, leadership uh, will be wise enough uh, uh, to do it smoothly uh, without uh, provoking further instability. It is very important uh, to have a new social contract uh, with the society of Kazakhstan to make sure that all factions of the Kazakhstan society are represented uh, uh, in the leadership and uh, have a say uh, in the discussion on the future development of the country. Thank you so much, Professor Andrei Kortonov, for joining us from Russia, who is uh, Director General of the Russian International Affairs Council, and Professor Wang Jing of Northwest University of China.